In this episode, I'll explain two dressage naturally exercises that are really at the heart of dressage naturally and that can really change your horse's movement dynamic and the relationship between you and your horse when it comes to improving the biomechanics. So here we go, episode 85, two exercises that change everything. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe, and welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So let's get started. The goal of both of the exercises that I'm going to talk about today is to help horses find more relaxed, free, movement, but in a way that the horse actually feels like they're participating and in a way that they're going to think that you are their hero, (laughs) or at least you'll be their favorite massage therapist or personal trainer. So with both of these exercises, the horses are going to find a place of ease and freedom, and they're going to start to seek it themselves. So it's a let loose posture and a stretch that they're going to think of doing and actually will be offering it on their own, even at Liberty. So the two exercises are called the moving massage and the basic alignment exercise. And you can find these in my book. You can find videos about each of these in the video classroom. And they're taught in the step-by-step Um, highly supported course I have called Finding the Sweet Spot of Healthy Biomechanics. Uh, That course, by the way, opens for registration twice a year in March and September. So if you're listening to this podcast episode in either March or September, the Sweet Spot course is open (laughs) and you might just want to investigate it. All right. Let's start with moving massage because that's often an exercise that I use as a beautiful entrance to talking to any horse. So the idea of moving massage is that through our touch, physical and with some horses, just sort of an energetic touch, uh, we help them become aware of tensions held in their body. We become aware of them too. And then we help the horse release them. So it's done while in movement. And one of the reasons for that is because I find the relationship of relaxation in movement really fascinating. And ultimately, that's where we need them to be able to relax in order to move with power, where I think power equals relaxation plus energy. So I love to do this in motion. Plus, uh, when they're moving, we get actually a lot more feedback of what's happening in their body because we have more clues as far as the stride length and the feel of the stride and their posture and things like that. So moving massage will really change the relationship between you and your horse because even though the horse is moving, your touch in this moment is actually not asking for anything. And through your touch, he melts and he's going to feel better for you having touched him. So this makes it quite different than just about any exercise, any other exercise that we do, where we put aids on, our touch is causing him to do something for us, do a yield, work harder, go over here, go over there. And in this exercise, our touch is only there to help him melt and release any unnecessary tension. So the negative tension or brace. Now, the hardest part of this exercise is for the human and it's the mindset piece. A lot of students get really confused by this exercise because they're like, what am I supposed to be doing? And I'm like, well, you're not really doing that much. So the mindset of this exercise is one of sort of open, loving, non-demanding for sure, but you're, I'm really just sending love through my hand. And 
everything about this exercise is for the horse. For with capital all caps, <laughs> capital F, capital O, capital R. It's for the horse. So this is not about him achieving a certain posture or performing anything. It's just about finding what your horse looks like when they are moving freely forward with energy and as much relaxation as possible. So in this exercise, um, in reality, <laughs> the tricky part is that you actually are making some suggestions to your horse. So it's a moving massage. So we have to have the horse moving. So part of this exercise is that you make a suggestion to the horse that they walk and eventually even trot alongside of you. So one of the first prerequisites to create, um, to do this exercise is to create the feeling of the horse is going for a walk and you're simply walking along to keep up with him. And this is, it's kind of the in front of the leg principle. Uh, and this is tricky because oftentimes, you know, when we're doing a moving massage, our intention is relaxation. And then the human is so relaxed that they're not going anywhere. And then the horse doesn't want to move forward because they're like waiting for you. And this is where it can get really sticky. So step one is to make sure you can have your horse moving energetically and freely forward, but in such a way that it feels like your horse is walking by himself and you're just walking to keep up with him. And that will feel completely different than you going for a walk and your horse is following you. So if you can picture the extreme version would be, you know, you're dragging your horse along. So that's clearly not in front of the leg. <laughs> And then you can get to a point where the horse is, you know, sticking with you and they're kind of matching exactly, but they're kind of waiting, like making sure that like they don't get out of position. And if you even hesitate, they'll stop. So that's nice to be able to do that. But in moving massage, we actually want to be able to touch our horse by the head, the neck, the shoulders, the barrel of the horse up by his hips, maybe the tail. So you're going to have to um, feel like your horse is independent enough that he can just walk along and you could be standing anywhere next to or near his body. doesn't matter what. And he's like, that's fine. I'm going for a walk. So that's the first message is, can you have your horse have permission to go for a walk? And your energy is kind of like, don't worry about me. I'll keep up. So you want him to be thinking about himself. And of course, we don't want him just running off and dragging you. So, you know, there's some prerequisites here. If he's just running away from you, he's not going to be thinking about his body either. So make sure you have a nice, pleasant horse walking next to you. So once you have that established, that's when you want to drop into your massage therapist healing mode. And so imagine your horse is walking, you're walking along with them, and you just start to touch your horse, just start to put your hands on your horse. And at first, some horses will uh, zip away. Some horses will push into you. Some horses will want to stop. So your first intention is, can I just walk along with you? Like we're going for a walk through the park and I can put my hand on you and you don't even notice. Don't worry about me. I'm just touching you. So to have that intention of having no intention Right. So you don't want your horse like twitching. Like, what am I supposed to do? She's like, don't worry. I'm just walking with you. Just give that permission. And once you get to that place, then you can start to feel stuff. So just have your hand go over them and just feel. Does your horse's muscles feel taut like a drum? Does your horse's muscles feel like they're just like mm, buttery and you can feel them pulsing and, you know, contracting, relaxing, and contracting, relaxing or you know, what is, does he feel like he twitches and wants to get you off of him or does he flinch? You know, so really pay attention to the quality of the feeling. And by quality, I don't mean good or bad. I just mean, you know, what does it feel like? What are the adjectives you'd use to describe it? So at first it's just an exploration. So, so as you do this and you're touching with these really inquisitive hands, 
you probably will come across a moment where you feel tension. So that tension could be either the muscle gets hard underneath your hand, or you see him kind of flinch or brace or do some sort of posture that resembles like, ow, <laughs> or that's uncomfortable. And then if you find that you just want to stay there. And so a question you might be having right about now is like, what kind of pressure are you putting? I start with as absolutely light as possible, but some horses like firmer pressure and they'll lean into you. That's fine. Some horses want it really light. That's fine. Some horses, they want it so light that they can't even handle you touching them. I have a video in the video classroom doing it with my filly and she, I can't even touch her. It's too much. I have to just point. <laughs> and she, then you'll see me doing moving massage without even touching her. And she'll give a big release and shake her head and blow out. But what you want to do is make sure that whatever the pressure is, whether how light it is or how strong it is, how many pounds, you know, how many ounces or pounds it is, that it's not pokey, right? So it's not pokey. It's not demanding. It's not hard. It's a soft hand. You want to be embodying melting. And so if you feel a moment of tension where it is, just stay there. Don't try to work out the trigger point. Just stay there and kind of with the intention of like, oh, what's that? Can you relax here? Or can you let go of this? Or you don't have to be uncomfortable. What can we do here? And this is where you, you want to make sure you're not trying to, like I said, work out the thing. It's just that like, wow, look at that. We both noticed this. And then can you stay there with that beautiful, open, loving, non-demanding attitude and just think, oh my goodness, I really would love you to be able to feel better. What can you do? And while you're doing that, if you even think that there's a chance that possibly he might have thought about relaxing, that bit of flesh under your hands melt away. So this is a really important dynamic. Number one, he knows that you felt it. Because this is probably a very, I mean, it's a very internal, very um, maybe delicate feeling inside of his own body. And can you imagine if he starts going, oh my gosh, you felt that too? Right? So you want to prove to him that you're feeling stuff. So like I said, even if you think that maybe there's a chance that you kind of thought that possibly you were feeling something about relaxing, err on the side of acknowledging that. You can always come back to that place later. So you want him to know that you know and that you felt it. And you want him to know that he's safe. And by safe, meaning that when he relaxes and opens, you're not going to go in there and dig more. Right? So think about what defensiveness is and what brace is. You think something's going to be uncomfortable, and so you guard the area. You protect it. So by nature, then, if he's going to open, when they relax that muscle, then the defenses are down. And if there was a sore spot or a memory or something associated with it, if he relaxes and you're like, ha now I can go in deeper, well... He's probably going to put those defenses right back up again. So a lot of defensive braces can start to dissolve from this exercise and not just the physical ones. So mental braces, emotional braces for sure. Now, other questions you might be thinking of are like, well, where do I touch them? I don't know. <laughs> so like I said, at first, just go through a little discovery of just, I'm going to just feel my horse and feel what I'm feeling and feel all over. And that way you kind of get a map of how they feel when you touch them here, how you feel when they, you touch them there. And chances are, once you go through that a couple times, you'll probably notice some areas that felt more tense than other areas. If you feel like you really can't find any tension, then that's great. Just do this exercise with this feeling of love and discovery and just practice touching your horse with no intention. And you can still sometimes just from that take something that's already pretty yummy and make it even yummier. 
right? So we don't, it's not just about coming out of the negative and getting to neutral. It's about seeing how much relaxation we can have while having this free forward, sometimes quite energetic movement. So as you scan, as you feel it, you're going to be um, looking for the signs of release, right? So you're curious, you're feeling, you're sending that love. And whether you found Aries attention that then melted, or you're just scanning your horse, watch for these signs of release. So what might those be? Uh, the horse might offer to stretch. They might, you might notice some longer swingier strides or lighter steps. Sometimes when you first try to trot your horse next to you, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to run to keep up. And then after they can do it in moving massage, you could just be walking a normal pace and somehow they're managing to trot. Now, how is that? Well, because they're looser and their shoulders can operate in a more light and up and free plane. So they're not just plowing forward. You might see a change in their breathing. Sometimes it's just deeper breathing. Some Often they'll blow out. Often they'll yawn. Often they'll shake their head, the kind of like release shake, like shake their head and then blow out. Their eyes will get softer and that energy will, fee will feel freer. So less sticky, ploppy energy <laughs> and more um, melty, slushy, sloshy energy. And now there's, if you're having trouble picturing this, there's several videos of this in the video classroom. Once you're in there, just search for moving massage. Um, and I, there's lots of different horses that I do it on. And there are some, you know, different variations on how to do it and actually when to do it. Uh, so I think it'll be really interesting um, and worth it for you to check those out. Okay, so now let's talk about the basic alignment exercise. So this exercise can be done online or riding. And the, the concept is somewhere between where you're crooked and the opposite of where you're crooked, there's a place of alignment. And when you find that place of alignment, movement will become more free and more easy. When you're in that place of alignment, the top line can relax and the whole body is used and the gates become, again, swingier and freer and more powerful. And that place of alignment, which is what I call the sweet spot, when you find that yummy place where the horse just lets loose, it's going to feel good to the horse, even if it feels weird on the way to finding it. And that's, again, why this makes this a powerful exercise, because the horse is going to want to seek it himself once he realizes there's that opportunity. Now, crookednesses can be pretty complex, especially in a big, long horse. So it's often not just one body part that needs to move. And don't assume that you know what the horse needs to do no matter how much experience you have, <laughs> it's, much, it's a much more powerful experience for the horse if they're given the opportunity to choose and to feel the different choices rather than to just be put in a specific shape that you as the experienced dressage rider know he needs to be in. And now, so this is not necessarily a refinement exercise, although once you have it, you can use it during upper level movements. But this exercise is really good for removing what I call the big rocks. So, you know, basic horse falling in on the shoulder, drifting out through there, just sort of an untouched horse. Um, and you think about that circuit of energy. I The analogy that resonates with me as I picture this river of energy moving from the hind end up through the spine and out through the forehead of the horse. And anywhere that there's crookedness or brace or things like that, I picture that's like a big rock in that river creating this turbulence, right? So the, um, the energy doesn't just flow. It gets stuck there or it spills over the sides. <laughs> and when we remove the big rocks, then whew, things go... Once you remove the big rocks through an exercise like this, 
then precise gymnastic training is going to refine it further. So that's kind of how it, how this exercise fits in the big scheme. I love starting with moving massage. It sort of opens up that beautiful relationship between you, your horse, and what happens when you touch your horse and how, oh my gosh, thank you so much for touching me. I feel so much better. This exercise brings in, the basic alignment exercise brings in some more requests. So I am going to ask the horse to move their parts around, but in a way that ultimately they understand and feel the choices and they start to choose that end goal of what we want them to do. Then from there, we can, we have this horse who's moving really free and forward and we got the big rocks removed and they have a great attitude about our aids and how much they help the horse. Now you've got a horse that's going to be much more open to more demanding things like gymnastic exercises. Okay, so let's look at how to do the basic alignment exercise. When you do the basic alignment exercise, you're going to want to observe, experiment, allow, and then observe. So I'll just talk you through the process. So I'm usually going to do this on a circle. So when online, that definitely makes it easier. <laughs> the horse is going around you. But even riding, uh, I'll want to keep a nice smooth line, right? So you can, you can do it going down the trail. Um, but I think the important part is that you have a line. So one long straight line or a continuous circle. Because if we're trying to be aligned, you have to be aligned on something. <laughs> so have a line to get aligned with. And that's going to help you also know when your horse is aligned because they will hook on to that line of travel. That's one of the clues. So I'm, so I'm visualizing this nice smooth circle. I'm sort of embodying it. I'm positioning myself so that that ought to be what happens. But then I allow the horse to move. And chances are he's going to fall off that line of travel or be a little crooked or bulge or haunches are going to be a little in or out or the shoulders are going to be a little in or out, whatever it is. As soon as I notice that, I go, oh, okay, that just happened. I wonder if you can do the opposite of that. So if I visualize that beautiful circle and I allow, I let the reins go and I just see where the horse goes, if that left shoulder, if let's say the outside shoulder, let's say I'm going track left, let's say the right shoulder bulges out. As soon as I notice that, I'm going to quietly ask for the opposite of that. So if I'm trotting and they want to bulge through the right shoulder, they're probably going to do that pretty easily because that's where they like to do. Chances are if I say, hey, could you do the opposite of that? Could you counter position and, and fall in with your left shoulder? They might find that more awkward. If they can do it at the trot, great. If I'm starting to use a ton of aids, because that's difficult, because it should be difficult, because it's the opposite of where, what they're offering to do. I might go to the walk. And if that's still difficult, I might wait and just stop and halt in the position that embodies the opposite of where they drifted off. And then I'll take a breath. Oh, thank you. And I'll allow them again right from there. Chances are, when I allow them, they're going to end up going right back to their original crookedness or drift or whatever it was. So in the example I used, I'll, have, I'll position them to the right, drift a sh left shoulder in, and then I'll say, thank you. I'll release. I'll visualize and embody the circle. And chances are, within maybe a two, <laughs> two or three strides, he's going to be bulging out through that right shoulder again. And then I just say, oh, hey. I wonder if you can do this other thing. So now it's it's not as a punishment and it's not um, rough, right? But it's just like, oh, look, now I'm aware of this. And then you go to a yoga class and you exaggerate it and you do it slowly and methodically and with great intention and you go as slow and down as many gates as you need to until it can happen smoothly and easily and then you stop. 
You thank him for that effort because boy, was that awkward. Thank you so much. Let's try that circle again. And eventually as you do this, let's say the horse can't do it at the trot and they are still struggling at the walk and you have to keep stopping and just being a statue in the shape of the opposite of their <laughs> favorite crookedness. That's okay because as you practice this, you're going to be gaining the coordination and fairly soon within one session or maybe a couple sessions, your horse is going to be able to get better at that. And they're going to be able to make that shift sort of on the fly. So ultimately once the horses understand this and you practice it, it can be such a small thing. Like the shoulder bulges a little within half a stride, you're going the opposite way. And you know, half a stride later, you're back allowing again. So know that it will end up refined, but it'll only end up refined if you take the time to break it down and slow it down and stop as much as you want, right? So I could be trotting along. I allow in two steps, the horse is bulging out to the right. I go, oh, I noticed that. And then maybe it takes 30 seconds before I manage to stop, shape it up a little bit, relax inside that shape, thank him very much, and then go again. Totally fine. Totally worth it. So if you're trying to communicate to do that opposite yield and it's too hard and too um, uncoordinated, then yeah, you need to practice it like, like a yoga class. Breathe into the stretch and the positioning. <laughs> Don't rush it. And so through this experimenting, a couple of things are going to happen. Um, well, one thing is you're going to start noticing where your horse drifts. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what if my horse doesn't really drift? What if I'm not really sure where he's crooked? Um, great question. So something you can do with any horse, and I even tempt you to do this with a horse that has an obvious crookedness, because a, a crookednesses are complex, like I said earlier. And even though that shoulder's drifting right, and we can go, well, clearly I need to be yielding that shoulder. Maybe the shoulder is falling to the right because the haunches are doing something else. So a great place to start is with just experimenting and going, I wonder if I can ask the shoulders to go more left than any other body part. Thank you. Leave them alone. Then see, I wonder if I can ask the shoulders to go more to the right than any other body part and practice that until it can be a little coordinated and in flow. And then you go, hey, I wonder as I'm going along if I can yield the haunches to the left more than any other body part. And then same thing to the right. You can also ask the whole horse to yield in or the whole horse to yield out. And one important part of this is that you're not sustaining it there. So it's, it's a momentary thing. As soon as he commits to it, it's done. So you're going along, you feel a crookedness, do the opposite, thank you, and then just allow again, one or two steps. And again, you might have to break it down and go slow, and it might take a few steps before you get the one step that you were aiming for, right? Because sometimes we ask our horse's shoulders to move, and then the whole horse moves, but the shoulders are still um, more to the one side than the haunches. So you always want to make sure you can do the shift so that that one body part ends up more to that direction than any other body part. As soon as he commits to it, let it go. By nature, the opposite of their natural crookedness will be very awkward for them. So you don't want to hold it there. The only place to sustain it is if you're in the halt. Then you can sort of sit there for a second, relaxing and breathing into it like you really are in a yoga class. But ultimately, you just touch it. As soon as you know they made it, let it go. And then you repeat that. And there, chances are they are always going to return to the familiar crookedness rather than stay in the opposite of that. But what happens is... Somewhere between, as they're going from their crookedness to your suggestion of the opposite positioning, 
they're passing through alignment for a split second. And after you have them in the opposite of their crookedness and you allow them again, and they head back towards their normal crookedness, they also pass through alignment again. And so this is the magic. This is why you don't want to be holding. You don't want to be forcing. You want to give them some choices. Here's where you tend to be. Let's practice the opposite of where you tend to be. And then I'm going to leave you alone. And you've got a choice. And what you'll start to notice is they, t- they don't go back to the original crookedness quite as quickly. So at first you allow, and in two steps, boom, they're back bulging (laughs) that shoulder again, or whatever it is. And then you might notice that they, oh, wow, they stayed there for like three or four steps before they plopped into it or half a circle or, you know, whatever it is, but start noticing those small differences because what's the, the hypothesis is alignment will feel better to the horse than both the crookedness that's familiar to them and the opposite of that crookedness when given the choice. So as you play with this, start to notice, does your horse change? Does your horse start going, well, wait a minute, why don't we stay here for a second and really look for those signs of release again, the starting to stretch, breathing deeper, strides feel swingier, stuff like that. And those magic moments will be fleeting at first because they'll, they'll be crooked. You'll do the opposite of crooked. You'll let them go. They'll stay there. All of a sudden, oh, they snort and they blow out. And then five strides later, they're like, what was they doing? And they're back crooked again. So again, you've got to be really patient and be willing to go deep in here and to stay so curious because if you can make a drop of progress with this exercise in one session and then go visit it the next day, it's going to happen faster. And now other, other times um, people are like, well, I don't know if, even if my horse is crookedness. So like I said, you're just going to experiment. Um, but signs of, of your horse not necessarily being in the optimal alignment Um, could also be kind of the opposite of what the stretching releasing signs are. So it could be um, always speeding up, the head up, the back dropped, holding its breath, stuff like that. So if your horse is going along, you might think this feels, this doesn't feel crooked. Keep experimenting and play with this basic alignment exercise with great curiosity. And you might just find a place that's even yummier. You didn't even think he was crooked. But when you yield that shoulder that certain way, oh my gosh, then he really comes through. And so once the horse experiences this, that you're actually showing some, showing him some options, practicing a skill that's missing by doing those opposite yields, he's going to start seeking this place and he's going to start needing fewer reminders and much lighter reminders. And then they hook on. And it can be like you go out with your horse, they're in their old habitual pattern, and you just do like two little shoulder wiggles. They're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. (laughs) Thanks, mom, for reminding me about that thing I do with my shoulder. And then again, they'll hook on. And, And this exercise, like you can turn your horse out at liberty, or I've seen this happen with my horses. I'll just send them out at liberty. I'm not really thinking about posture. I'm just letting them move around a little bit to warm up before I play some silly games or something like that. And I find that if they stay out there for more than a circle or two, they'll put themselves in this position. They'll just, they'll, you know, going along with whatever posture they have. And pretty soon they're like, wait, I could be feeling a lot better. And they'll start to send themselves out and stretching and let loose and free. It's really, really cool, I have to say. So um, let's see, what else can I say about this? Yeah, there's, as always, videos in the classroom about this. Um, and this this exercise is one of the ones that you know we give a lot of support to students with in the Finding the Sweet Spot of Healthy Biomechanics course. 
You can find information about that if you go to my website, dressagenaturally.net, and then just look for the tab across the top that says uh, Programs, and you'll find the Finding the Sweet Spot of Healthy Biomechanics program. Um, there are, you know, considerations. So I think what I told you here will give you enough to play with this. There's definitely some considerations and some more prerequisites, <laughs> You know, as far as establishing good communication about doing all these yields that you need to do with basic alignment exercise, um, it can be a little tricky because because we're ask initially we're asking the horse to do the hard thing, right? So they're comfortable drifting right, and we're saying, "Hey, could you go to the left?" So that by nature is the hard thing for them to do. So initially, when you start this exercise, it can feel like your horse is like, what are you doing? You keep asking me for the like really uncomfortable thing. And this is why it's so important to have, have the intention of the exercise and know enough about how to do it that you, you know what you're looking for. Because if you do it with enough strong intention, you'll get to the good moment quicker. And then you and the horse will be like, oh, oh, that's why we're doing this. <laughs> And you've got to get to that part. Okay, so little context again. I mentioned this earlier, but um, where these two exercises fit in my program, you know, I use the moving massage and basic alignment exercise when the horses are sort of ready to think about biomechanics. Well, actually, the moving massage you can do any time to any horse, even really super foundational. But bio, uh, basic alignment exercise um, is when they're ready to think about their biomechanics and I want to create kind of a foundational desire to stretch, right? So that feeling that they trust me enough, they're open enough, and I have get those big rocks out of the river so they are as free and natural in their movement as possible. And then I also can use a refined version of the basic alignment exercise later when asking for more engagement. Because when you start to engage the horse more, that's when all your crookednesses come back. That core crookedness will pop out again. Uh, so, But you can do the same thing. So I can use it in a refined way to find the just right alignment in any exercise. So if I'm doing shoulder in, you know, I'm creating a bend, I'm putting the shoulders in a certain place, I'm keeping the haunches in a certain place. Well, I wonder if that's just the right place so you can do a very fine version and inside that shoulder in, you're doing just little, little mini checkpoints and your horse by this time is used to it. And you're just kind of checking and find the, the just right alignment within that shoulder in where your horse can be the most through. So that's how I will bring that forward with me. And just remember both these exercise, exercises, moving massage and basic alignment exercise require a mindset of curiosity and an openness from you um, for experimentation. So no matter how much experience you have, approach your horse with the attitude that you don't know, but you're curious to find out. And you want to find what they need in this moment to feel better. So many times I'm surprised by what adjustment will cause the horse to let loose. And when I'm too sure of myself, I sometimes miss the magic moment. So with these exercises, it's not about what your horse can do for you. It's about what you can do for your horse. And that is why these exercises can change everything from your relationship to your horse to the way he moves. Once you've gone through this process to remove the big rocks then, like I said, I use my experience to prescribe precise gymnastic exercises to further develop them. And by then, by doing these two exercises, moving massage and basic line exercise, the horse sees my aids as something that's going to help him feel better. And that is pure gold. <laughs> 